Welcome back everyone. We are in the process of making a bolt and a threaded nut to fit it. We have finished our threaded rod and we have tapered the bottom edge. So now we're going to make a head for the bolt and then we're going to duplicate or copy that and we're going to use that copy to be able um, to be the nut that we're going to use. All right, so let's get started. I first want to group this bottom of the bolt here. So with my selection tool, I'm going to select everything, right click, and make group. I'm doing this so that when I put the head of the bolt on, it won't get confused with this part. So I'm going to kind of rotate to the top, deselect, and I'm going to use a polygon tool here. A polygon tool, I want it to have six sides. So I click on the polygon. Now by default, mine is set at six, yours may be different. So you just type in the number you want. Three, enter, now it's a three-sided polygon. Seven, enter, it's a seven-sided polygon, but I want six. So I'm gonna type six, enter, it's a six-sided polygon. I now need to start this. If I look at the top, I am used to, I'm conditioned to go to the edge of a circle and it will go to the center of that circle or the center of that group. However, that's not the center of the threaded rod. Let me look at the top here. We can see that this dot is in the center of that circle, okay? But with this threading over here, that kind of changes the center. That's why it's been so important that we've kept this right, that we started our, our object on the point of origin, and we've kept it there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start this polygon right where the line is. Okay, so where this vertical line comes down, and it, it's not going to click or snap to anything like we're used to it doing, okay? But I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to do my best to get right where that starts. It should, it should be on the face, but it's not on the center. I'm going to click and release. And I'm going to kind of pull out, and I want to pull out on that red axis. Okay, so instead of it being black, it should be red. You're going to pull out, let me zoom out here. And I'm going to go out 21 millimeters. So you could go till it says 21 and click, or I'm going to type on my keyboard. I'm going to let go of my mouse. Type 21, enter, and it will give me that plane. I can now use my push pull tool, P on the keyboard, or find it on the tool menu to the left click and release, and I'm going to raise this three millimeters. So I'll type three on the keyboard, enter, it snaps to that height. I now have a bolt. I need to make the nut for this, and it's easier if I just copy this and make small changes to it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my selection tool by hitting the space bar, triple click on the head of this bolt, and now I'm going to move it. Click the M key on the keyboard or find your move tool. Click anywhere on the bolt. Click and release. I'm lifting up on the vertical surface, but I want that original head still there. So I'm going to hit the modifier key, option for Mac, control for PC and Chromebooks. And I'm going to make my second click with my move tool. One thing we do have to be aware of is when we're making this nut, we need it to be at least thick enough so it can span from one full thread, okay? So this is already three millimeters tall. To span this, and I, I could grab the, I guess I will, grab my measurement tool here, and if I go like from this point here up to this point here, that says it's five millimeters. So I'd have to make this at least five, okay? I want at least one full thread. So I just check that with my tape measure tool. What I'm going to do, it's already three, all right? Go to my selection tool, hit the space bar. I'm gonna click off of that. I'm gonna go to my push-pull tool, P for push-pull. I'm gonna, it's already three. It's starting out at zero. I'm gonna click and release. I'm actually gonna go up five. So I'm gonna type five, enter, which is going to give me more than one, almost two full threads to bite in. Okay, so I went up five millimeters. 
So that's a total of eight now. If I were to measure that with my tape measure tool, that would be up eight. Okay. Now I need to copy this. I'm actually going to take what we have here and I'm going to make a duplicate of it over here to the side because I'm going to lose one of these two objects when I cut the threads of this nut. So I hit the space bar to get my select tool and select everything. Hit my M key to get to my move tool. Click anywhere on our selection. Click and release. I'm going to move it to the right along the red axis. I want to keep the original, so I'll hit my modifier key, option or control, and then click. Now, I'm going to go back to my selection tool, hit the space key, click off of everything. I'm going to pull this nut on top of this bolt, and I'm going to delete that, delete those threads, and have it cut into the surface with my subtract tool. So I will select this object, right click, and make group. So the area that's going to be a nut, I made a group. Now this area here that I threaded, because I have so many small little lines in here, I need to go to my inspector tool in the lower right hand corner, and I need to fix those errors. Okay, So there's a ton of short edges, those are going to be okay, but I have an internal face there, which I shouldn't have, I must have missed one there. So let's fix that error. Some of those errors couldn't be automatically fixed, that's those short edges. Um, that's because we're dealing in millimeters and it's typically used to doing feet and inches in this program, but that'll be okay, it'll work for us. I'll deselect, and now I'm going to grab this group, the nut group, and I'm going to move that down. So I hit M for my move tool, click anywhere on the nut, pull it straight down. Again, if you're having a hard time getting it so that it stays on that blue axis, you can just hit the up arrow and it locks it in for us. And you can place it anywhere here. It doesn't need to be in one particular spot. Anywhere you cut the threads, it will still work. So I'll place it and deselect. Hit my space bar to go to my selection tool, make sure nothing's selected. And now I want to grab my subtract tool. And the way that this works is the first object that you click on is going to be cut away or lost. And the second object that you click on is going to be what's cut into or left remaining. Grab my subtract tool. Zoom in here. Can you see how it says number one? That's my first group. And this has to be done with groups. It has to be done with solid objects. So I'm going to click on that. Give it a minute to, to think. And now I'm going to go to my next group. Okay, so this isn't a group, so that's not working. That's not a solid, I should say. But this is. I made this a group. So I'm going to click on this. Let me zoom out for you. You can see the number two there. I click on this as my second. And when I do that, it has now cut the threads of this. So I'll go to my selection tool, deselect everything. I'm going to triple click this and delete. Triple click this and delete. I don't need those. And now we have our threaded nut and our bolt. Good work with that. Unfortunately, if we printed this on a 3D printer, it wouldn't quite work. In, in a perfect world, it should work. What happens is, is we have the friction, and there's just not enough space or play in here to have this actually function. So what we need to do is to move or open up those threads on the X and Y axis. We need to make it bigger, not vertically on the Z axis. That would change the pitch there. We just want to go on the X and Y axis just to make a little bit bigger hole. Okay, so I'm going to grab, or with my selection tool, I'm going to click on my object. I'm going to hit S for the scale tool. I'm going to go to the corner. I'll click on the corner, on this mid corner here. So I'm on a corner and on the, the mid handle. Click and release. And it's kind of going in one direction here. I actually want to hit my modifier key, option, or control, so that it rotates about the center. Okay, and when I do that, I want to go bigger than what it was. So it was at one, okay, right there. I want to go bigger than that. So I'm going to go 20% larger. So that's 1.2 comma 1.2. 1 1.2 comma 1.2, enter. 
And now the threads in here are big enough that it will screw in and unscrew with a little bit of play. All right, you could fine tune this, adjust it a little bit more, but I find that works well for us, at least as a starting point for you. Okay, great. The problem now, I'm gonna go back to my selection tool, is that this nut is bigger than the head of this bolt. Now, is that really a problem? No, not in particular, but we want it to be the same, right? We want it to be just the same as this, but we cannot affect these threads. So we're gonna go inside of this group, using my selection tool, I'm gonna to double click, I'm inside of the group, and using my selection tool, I wanna to select this line here, because I wanna shrink the exterior. I'm gonna hold down the shift key as I click on this bottom line as well. There's two of them we have to grab. So I use the shift key and I selected both that top perimeter and that bottom perimeter. Okay, I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard for the scale tool and I'm going to click here on that middle part. See how it's taking it down? It's leaving the size of the threads the same, all right? But it's not doing it about the center. So I need to use my modifier key, option or control. So it rotates about the center. And I did go bigger, right? I went 20% larger, but now I have to decrease and I have to decrease that by a different percentage. I'm actually only gonna go down 17% from where it currently is. So I'm gonna go 0.83 comma 0.83, enter. Use my selection tool to deselect. And now I have the threads, which are 20% larger than the bolt here, but the outside dimensions of the nut are the same as the outside dimensions of the bolt head. Okay, good job with that.